Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will start to implement the functionality to save images in shared storage, in external storage or scoped storage, whatever you want to call it. And this is where the pain will start. Um, don't worry, we will go through this together. You will understand it after this playlist. In case you're watching this video independently of this playlist and you just want to know how to save images in external storage, that is totally fine. But then please take a look in this video's description to get the initial source code for this video. So you can start from there and you will also find the source code um, that we'll actually implement in this video in this video's description. So you will find my GitHub repository. Before I start, I actually want to correct myself because in the last video I said with scoped storage, which applies to Android level, uh, API level 29 and 30, so Q and R. I said that we can't read photos that we actually made with an external camera app. And we can only read photos that we made with our own app. That is not true, to be honest. The reason why that wasn't working in my app to read photos from, uh, from the camera app was just a stupid bug of mine and we can actually do that with the corresponding permission. But what I actually meant is that we can't modify external uh, external photos, so we cannot delete them, um, override them, put them in trash can without the user's permission. So here you can see this is the prepared app, and this is a photo that I made within the app here, so deleting shouldn't be an issue. If we just long click on that, you can see we can immediately delete it, and this photo here was made with the phone's camera. If we long click on that, you can see then we need to allow this deletion. And we, if we then click on allow, then the photo will also be deleted, which is, um, which is actually a photo that this app didn't do. But if the user confirms the deletion, it will also work. To get a really good understanding of the scope storage concept, I can only recommend you to watch my two minute video about that where I explain that with nice animations. Just check it out here. I will link it. It really gives you a great overview over scoped storage in just two minutes. So really just take a look and from there on we can follow on in this project. Let's dive into it. So the first thing we want to do here in our app is we want to add permissions. When we access external storage, we need permissions. For internal storage, we didn't need that. For external storage, we do need that. So in our Android manifest, I will add user's permission called, on the one hand, read external storage. And that is the permission with which we can read files from other apps. So from the camera app images, for example. And then we can duplicate that pressing Control D. We also want to add write external storage. So with that, we can actually save files in external storage. And we want to add a max SDK version to the write external storage permission because that is only needed until Android API level 28. So let's add that and you can also see the warning goes away. So that is one feature of scope storage, which applies to API level 29 and above that we don't need this write external storage permission anymore. We can just save our images in collections without any permission, basically. But before that, we needed that permission. And then next, we want to go to our main activity and create some variables here and objects. On the one hand, those will be two booleans that just say if we uh, granted the permission or not. So private variable read permission granted it to false initially and we will have the same for the write permission and we will also have this activity launcher for requesting the permissions so just as we did here for the taking taking a photo here with this activity result launcher we can do the same for permissions actually and that is um, as well just as easy as taking a photo and for that we will create a private late init variable called permissions launcher and that will be an activity result launcher of type array of type string. Why array of string? Because 
we just want to pass multiple permissions and each permission is just a string here in Android. Then I will now create a function that will actually request these permissions. So reading and writing to external storage. Let's do it here. Private function. I'll call it update or request permissions. So this function will basically just check, okay, do we have permission? It will update our two corresponding variables here with the corresponding values. So if we have that, that permission or not. And if we don't have that, then we want to request these permissions. So we can first of all check val has read permission using context compat.check self permission. We pass this for the context and the permission we want to check for is manifest from Android permission read external storage. And if that is equal to package manager dot permission granted. So if this condition is true, we know we have read permissions else we don't have that. We can copy this and do the same for writing per, uh, write permissions has write permission. And we swap this out with write external storage. Now, I will check if we are actually um, on an Android device with a minimum SDK of at least 29, so Android Q, because from there on this write external storage permission does not need to be requested. You can see we have a max SDK version of 28, so when we have 29 and above, we don't need to request that. So val min SDK 29 is equal to build dot version but SDK int, and if that is greater than or equal to build dot version codes dot Q, which is Android API level 29. Then now we want to actually update our two permission booleans. On the one hand, read permission granted, and we set that to has read permission, and write permission granted, we will set that to has write permission or min is decay 29. So on devices on with level 29 and above, this will be false because we don't have that permission on these devices. But since this will be true, and we have an or condition here, then we will save true in that anyways. And we will treat it as if we would have granted uh, as if we would have granted permission. And now we can construct our permission request, which is just an array of strings that contains the permissions we want to request. So val permissions, let's call it permissions to request. It's equal to a mutable list here, because we want to be able to add permissions to that list, and then we can just convert it to an array. So if a write permission is false, write permission granted, we want to add that to our list, manifest.permission. Um, write external storage. Copy this and do the same for read permissions granted. And swap this out with read external storage. And then if this permissions to request list is not empty, so if there is at least one permission to request, we will take our permissions launcher and launch that with our corresponding array which is permissions to request that to typed array. And by the way, in this project, I will ignore the fact or ignore handling it when the user declines the permission and maybe even permanently denies that. Usually in a production app, you would handle that. You would show a corresponding dialog. Hey, you just um, permanently disabled the permission without the app can't work. And if you want to enable it, you can do that here in the app settings. So that is how you would handle that in a real app. But since this focuses more on the storage part here and not on <laughs> um, granting permissions, I will skip this here. Now the next step is to actually save a photo. So we want to write a function to save a photo in external storage. Let's do that right here. Private function save photo to external storage. This will take the display name of that photo and the corresponding bitmap we want to save and also return a boolean whether saving that was successful or not. And now when dealing with a storage, we have 
these um, version checks so often, and specifically that version check if we're running on Android level, API level 29 and above, which is why I want to create a little helper function for that so we don't always need to write that if statement. And for that, I will create another file here in our root package. Kotlin class of file called storage util. Check file here. Yes, I want to add that to git. That will be an inline function, actually generic, and that will be called SDK 29 and up. So this function will just make sure that this device is running on SDK 29 or above, and else this function will return null, so we can handle that case. If you're running on SDK 29 and above, we want to trigger a Lambda function here. This function will just return T here, so whatever type we choose, and this out of function will also return T, but nullable. So it will return null if we're running on SDK below 29, and it will return whatever we return in this Lambda function when we're running on SDK 29 and above. I know this sounds confusing. You will see it's, it's very easy in practice, and you will see how this works. All we do here is we want to return if build dot version SDK int if that is greater than or equal to build dot version codes Q, which is 29. If that is the case, if we're running above that, we just want to trigger our lambda function and just return the result here from that lambda function. You can see it returns a type T and our outer function also. And if that is not the case, we simply return null because now we will actually make use of that function in main activity in our save photo to external storage function in which we will now deal with so-called media store. What is media store? Well, it's basically a huge database for all kinds of media files and the corresponding metadata. So with media store, we can just basically now get a collection for our images and then we will save our bitmap in that collection. And because getting the URI for that collection, a URI is basically just um, the address for wherever we want to save that image, if you don't know that, because that differs on uh, different API levels. On API level 28 and below, we need a different URI than on 29 and above. We have a lot of these um, differences here with storage. That is what, it, what makes it so complicated. But using our helper function, we can now make that very easily. So val image collection is equal to SDK 29 up. You can see we have a lambda function here. And now in this function block here, we return whatever we want to return for 29 and up. And then we can check if this is null here. If it's null, we can simply return what you want to what we want to assign on level below 29. So here we want to use media store images. You can also see there is not only images, but also is it music or you can see video, for example. So all kinds of media files you can save here in Media Store and especially uh, the metadata for that. But we are interested in images dot media dot get content URI. And here we pass the volume name from Android 29 and upwards. We can only access the, the primary external volume in uh, external storage. So we will use media store, volume, external, primary. And on devices below that, we can basically access any external volumes. So here we can just return media store, images, media, external content, URI. And now we not only want to save our plain bitmap, instead we also want to save some metadata with it that we and other apps can actually access and make some use of. And for that we need to define so-called content values. These are very similar to bundles in Android, so we can just create a content values object here and then call apply on that. And here we can just call put. Just like for bundles, we have a key and a value of things we can put in here. The key is always something that we get from media store, images, media, and you can see we have a bunch of things we could potentially add here. For example, the width and the height, which we'll actually do here. 
Um, but I will start with the display name of that image. So now we can define, hey, the image we want to save here has the following display name, which is just our display name here, a JPEG. Then we can duplicate that three more times. This one will be the MIME type that we save, which will be image slash JPEG. And we want to save the width and the height of that image, which we can get from the bitmap, bitmap.width and bitmap.height. And now together with that image collection, we can now actually save our image in media store. So I will return a try and catch block here. In case something goes wrong, we want to catch that exception of type IO exception here. In that case, let's just print that exception and return false. So then saving was not successful, obviously. And now to save something in external storage, we're using something called a content resolver. And a content resolver resolves content. <laughs> so we can just use it to either insert some of these media store entries, we can use it to read from external storage and all these things. So you can see we get an access here to content resolver. And here we have a bunch of functions like delete to delete an image. We can open an output stream input stream. We have a query, which we will actually need in uh, the next video, I think. And yeah, we actually want this insert function to insert, you can see something at a specific URI, which will be our image collection. And we can paste our values here because we want to paste these content values at that specific URI. We can call that, I can now check here actually, call that also. And here we now get access to the URI for our image here that we actually want to save. So this insert function will just create the, the entry with all the metadata for our image. It won't save the image yet. It will just save the metadata in a big database, but it will return the URI for that image where we can actually now save it. And to save it, we again need an output stream, just like in the, the last video, for which we can also use content resolver, open output stream, which takes a URI. We pass our URI, we call dot use. We can give this a name of output stream. And here it's also nothing new. We can just check if bitmap.compress. If that is not successful, we throw an exception. We want to compress with compress format JPEG. Quality, let's choose 95 again and pass our output stream for that. And in case something fails, we throw an IO exception couldn't save bitmap. And we still get a big error here because we don't or Android doesn't know yet what happens if this returns null. So after this also block, if this is actually null, we also want to throw an exception. And this now means that it failed to create that media store entry. So IO exception couldn't create media store entry. And if we didn't throw any of these exceptions, we can just return true here. So the saving was successful. That is it for saving a file. Let's scroll up to our take photo because here we actually check if this is private. And if it is, we save it in internal storage. But we also want to have an option uh, when it's not private. So when we want to save the photo in shared storage. And for that, I will actually take this cut it out, paste it here for this if statement, and is saved successfully, will be set to a when expression. When is private is true, we simply save it in internal storage. If write permission granted is true, that now means it's not private and we granted permission. So then we want to save the photo to external storage. I will again just choose a random name here and our bitmap, which is it, and else just false. So that means we don't have write permission, then uh, we don't want to save it. So then it's not successful, basically. 
this must be to string. Then we want to check if is private is true here. Then we want to take this. So then we want to load our internal storage and reload that. Else for external storage, you don't need that. So we can uh, just remove that from the if statement here. And that is basically it for the take photo launcher. Let's set up our recycler view for the shared storage. Copy this adapter. We name it to external storage photo adapter. Will be a shared photo adapter. Initialize that here. Uh, external storage photo adapter is a new shared photo adapter which will give us a lambda function when we long click on a photo. Um, we don't want to implement that yet. We don't have the delete functionality for external storage yet. But what we also haven't done yet is initialized this permissions launcher. Let's do that here. That is equal to register, activity, uh, register for activity result. The contract will be activity result contracts that um, request multiple permissions and here we now get a map of string keys to boolean so the string keys will now be the permissions and with a key we can just check if that permission was granted or not so that is the boolean so we want to set read permissions granted equal to let's give this a name of permissions we set it to permissions, we pass manifest that permission that read external storage and if that is null we just leave it at the value it is. Duplicate that, replace these things with write permissions granted and this with write external storage. And here we will add something later when we load our images from external storage. Right now we don't have that function yet, so we can actually call update or request permissions and then launch our app and see if it's working. I'm launching it on APR level 30. Uh, let's see here. Private switch is off. We click on photo. Let's make a photo of this cat. Click OK. It says photo saved successfully. Of course, we don't see it yet because we haven't implemented the load functionality. Um, but let's take a look in our gallery app here, Google Photos. And there is our cat. Um, this version is no longer available. Yeah, okay, that doesn't work, but you can see here is our cat. If we maybe make another photo, so you can see that again. Off. Let's do this TV. Photo saved successfully. Open Google Photos. It's not showing that here. Quit that maybe now. Yeah, now you can see there is our TV. Um, I don't know why Google Photos is so buggy. I can't update this on this emulator because I don't want to log in here with my Google account. But you can see it's working basically. We save our photos in the media store. And in the next video, we will then actually also load these photos so that we can see all the gallery photos in our app here. If you want to go much deeper into Android, check out the first link in this video's description to find premium courses to just take your Android skills to the next level and also just to support me and my work so I can keep doing all these free videos here on YouTube. Thank you so much for those who do and not a problem if you don't. I wish you an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.